So what I'd like to do now is demonstrate for you how to install a secondary site. Now, remember that a secondary site cannot be installed from the installation media uh, by running the setup program or the setup wizard. It instead has to be installed from the Config Manager console of a primary or central site. Uh, remember, it's always going to be a child to a primary site in your hierarchy somewhere. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we bring up here the console, and the main navigation area or workspace we want is the administration workspace here. So as we bring that up, you'll notice first we have a hierarchy configuration, which will be the kinds of settings that affect the entire hierarchy. Go ahead and close that down and look at site configuration. We can see here a listing of all of our sites that might already exist in our hierarchy if we had one. So this is the NYC site. It is a type primary with a site code of NYC. And if we right click it, we can create a secondary site. You'll also notice up in the ribbon, there is a button for creating a secondary site. So either way, let's go ahead and click Create Secondary Site, which brings up a wizard. We'll go ahead and click Next. And we have to answer a few questions here. So first of all, we'll give it a site code. Let's say that my secondary site here is going to be Miami. Then we need to give it the actual site server name. This is the system, the actual Windows computer system that is going to be uh, accessible on the network. It's got to be an Active Directory join domain system. And we're going to connect to it by name in just a moment. The site name, give it a more descriptive name. And I'll just say Miami Secondary Site. Give it the installation folder for this target machine where it will be installed. Let's go ahead and click Next. Now specify the location of the installation source files. We can copy them simply over the network um, or specify a UNC path where we may have already placed them on our network. Or if this is at a uh, particularly distribute, uh, or, um, distributed location across WANs and whatnot, we may want to use the source files that are already copied onto, a, um, onto the site system. So I'm going to specify the D drive. Go ahead and click Next. Now specify the SQL Server settings to be used. Remember that in a secondary, the database must exist on the same computer as the site system. So we have two choices. We either install and configure SQL Express right now, or we use an existing SQL Server instance. And we would point to it by name, but you'll notice it's grayed out. It does not give us the chance to change the fact that it's going to install it on the same local system as where we're installing this secondary site server. And then we would give it an instance. So if we had uh, installed this SQL database with a, uh, a separate instance besides the default, we could specify it here. This is the database that it's going to create. Um, but we'll go ahead and install and configure a local copy. Click Next. Now, remember that we said that a distribution point and a management point must co-locate and exist on the secondary site server. So now it's giving us the option to specify these distribution point settings. So first of all, IIS is a required component. So we're going to go ahead and let Config Manager install and configure IIS if necessary. What's the protocol we're going to use? If it's HTTPS, then we have to specify uh, information related to PKI type settings. And we can decide whether we're going to allow clients to connect anonymously or not. Uh, we can create a self-signed certificate or we can import a certificate here. And also the option of whether we're going to enable this distribution point for pre-staged content or not. Are we allowing it for pre-staged content? So these are the options that we have. Click Next. Now specify drive settings. Okay, where and how. Specify the space to reserve. How much space are we going to reserve on this distribution point? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, we can also specify the primary locations. So if we had multiple drives, we can specify here which drives we want to use for primary, secondary, and that would be content, and then the same for primary for packages and secondary share locations for packages. And we're choosing which drives to utilize. 
or we can have it simply be automatic. Click Next, specify the content validation settings. So we're going to verify the integrity of packages on this distribution point. And we can do so on a schedule. Uh, content validation priority can be lowest, low, medium, high, highest. Um, a high priority value might increase CPU usage and disactivation activity on the distribution point. So keep that in mind, but we want to validate on a schedule every one week. If we don't do a schedule, then validation will occur manually when we choose to validate it. Click Next. Now, specify the boundary groups to associate with this site system. So we can either add new boundary groups now, or we can create uh, boundary groups. Right, so we're creating one completely from scratch, or I'm adding ones that already exist. Okay, so I don't want to uh, add those as they're New York, so I could create new ones here. I can also come and do them later as well. Now notice the checkbox, allow fallback source location for content. So are we going to allow clients outside of these boundary groups to fall back and use the site system as a location when theirs are not available? And that would really just depend on your network bandwidth, whether we want to do that or not. So if we do, then that means that somebody, let's say in the New York site, if their distribution points are not available, they could actually connect across the WAN to the Miami distribution point in order to retrieve software packages. If you uncheck that, it's basically a way of saying, look, the WAN connection is not good enough. It's the whole reason we are installing a secondary site at this location, because the WAN's just not good enough. I don't want people from New York falling back to this location ever. So I would uncheck that box. Go ahead and click Next. We can confirm the settings, hit Next, and it'll start working on the process all the way through to completion. Now, we don't need to wait completely. Well, it says it completed successfully. But one thing I will say is that it continues, the, the, the job has been scheduled and the actual installation will continue as a task in the background. Let's go ahead and click close and we can kind of see that here. It's currently in a state of pending and that's because it's in progress of going through the installation of this particular um, site. But that's uh, right there is how we install a secondary site into our um, config manager hierarchy.